Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. If you're consumer reports, go f yourselves. I'll explain why in just a moment. So let's get into the video. And by the way, since I know there's a lot of crypto lovers watching and people who like free stuff, it's your lucky day. For a limited time, you can get up to $250 in free crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi where you can use cryptocurrency to earn interest, borrow cash, and buy or sell crypto. If you want your free crypto, use the link in the description. It also helps out the channel. And if you'd like up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $250 just for opening an account. And if you fund your account with $100, you'll get a second free stock valued up to $1,600. Unless you don't like free stocks, that is. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. To be frank with you guys, I really wish I didn't need to make this video today, but I just feel compelled to. I can't let it slide when I see this kind of dishonest, manipulative, deceptive, unethical behavior. I just can't help but speak up. And exactly what am I referring to? Let's find out. One of the flagship features offered in Tesla vehicles is Autopilot, a system that allows its cars to stay within lane markings and maintain a set speed and distance from cars in front, with minimal input from the driver. A recent crash involving a Tesla resulted in two passengers being killed, with investigators believing no one was in the driver's seat at the time of the crash. The crash raised the possibility that Autopilot was potentially engaged but being misused at the time of the incident. In response, Tesla CEO Elon Musk tweeted in part, data logs recovered so far show Autopilot was not enabled. Moreover, Standard autopilot would require lane lines to turn on, which the street did not have. While we don't know what actually happened in the Texas crash, we did want to see if it was even technically possible to operate a Tesla on autopilot with no one in the driver's seat. Why? Like, okay guys, we really need to take a moment here. Consumer Reports have just said, hey everybody, we're going to attempt to do an illegal behavior in a vehicle. Now. I could tell you nothing more about anything. The video could be done right here. Consumer reports are attempting to trick a Tesla into driving illegally. There's not a place on earth where it's legal to drive a vehicle if you're not in the driver's seat actually driving the vehicle. Why would consumer reports go out of their way to do something that they know is illegal and then attempt to suggest that maybe Tesla doesn't have good enough safety systems because if people wish to be a complete fucking moron in your Tesla, they can. I honestly do not understand what in the fuck Consumer Reports are thinking here. Um, my best guess, they're just trying to chase some of that clout, get on board the Tesla name, benefit from some of that publicity around the recent media fight about the so-called crash, rah, 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 rah. I think this is shameless self-promotion from Consumer Reports, but is extremely dangerous, dishonest, manipulative, deceptive, and just plain fucking wrong. So with that in mind, Grab your popcorn, kick your feet back, relax, settle in, get ready to enjoy the show as we see consumer reports out themselves as incompetent at worst and malicious at best. Since we own a Tesla Model Y as part of the Consumer Reports test fleet, we decided to try it out on our track. Here's some video we shot during our evaluation. So the first thing I did was I took this car to about 15 miles per hour, engaged autopilot, and then changed the set speed back down to zero, which stopped the vehicle but autopilot still remained engaged. If your hands are off the wheel, it could also stop autopilot, but I put a small weight on the left side of the steering wheel that wasn't enough to turn the wheel, but just enough to put some resistance there. Do I even need to? I mean, honestly, okay. Consumer reports have just rigged a f***ing weight to cheat the system. The system that Tesla has designed to ensure that people who aren't morons attempting to cheat the system because, of course, as I mentioned, you can cheat the system, you know, we've got rules, you shouldn't murder people. People can still actually murder people, they can get away with it before they're caught. Because we have rules, but we don't have systems in place that can literally prevent a person from murdering another person, okay? We just have rules, so people generally don't do it, okay? If you want to be a moron, if you want to murder someone, you can do it. You're probably going to face the consequences, but that's on you, not society or not the automotive manufacturer. Now, I really just want to let this sink in, okay? Consumer Reports are now attempting to cheat Tesla's system to get around it, doing something knowingly illegal and quite elaborate too. If you're a typical consumer driving a Tesla, Model 3, Model Y, whatever, you engage autopilot, you're unlikely to accidentally find yourself teleported into the passenger seat while simultaneously discovering a weight, perfectly weighted, 
right in the right place in the steering wheel so that the system is fooled into believing you're still in the driver's seat, okay? That could be unsafe, you know, if you suddenly just wake up and you're in the wrong seat and blah, 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 and your car's rigged up to drive on its own, but that's not how it works. You need to go to extraordinary measures to trick the system. What are consumer reports doing? They're not only trying to cheat the system illegally, but they're showing people how they've done it. So that 0.000% of person that's actually dumb enough to try to drive in the backseat of a Tesla, etc., now has a great reference example of exactly how to do it. I mean, what's the upside of Consumer Reports doing this for consumers? Answer, there isn't any. I personally believe that this is just a disgusting attempt at leveraging Tesla's brand and name and some of the FUD in the media to draw more eyes to this shady, despicable, shameless company. Let me know in the comments below. Why do you think Consumer Reports have done this demonstration to show how you can cheat your way around Tesla's safety mechanisms to prevent you from doing dumb things in your Tesla? Were Consumer Reports really genuinely trying to help consumers? Are they incompetent or maybe even malicious? I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's somebody paying the bills behind the scenes and not making allegations, just thinking out loud here because I don't understand why a company like Consumer Reports would do this unless they're actual morons, like the whole company is just full of brain dead f faces that don't understand that this is beyond the, or maybe there's ulterior motivations. I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud here. At this point, I was able to get myself completely out of the driver's seat. All right, so first we rig something up to trick the wheel into believing that somebody's still holding it. Then we, while keeping our seatbelt buckled, climb out of the driver's seat, kind of illegal, again, the whole point of what Consumer Reports are getting at here, I don't understand what the f*** they're doing. They've now done two highly illegal things, rigging the wheel, getting out of the driver's seat, to trick the system. What value is this adding to consumers? How is this helpful? How is this helping consumers be more safe or more informed when making purchasing decisions? With the seatbelt still plugged in, and autopilot still stayed engaged, in the passenger seat, I was able to increase the set speed by turning the wheel on the steering wheel. And at this point, it was completely driving on autopilot with no one in the driver's seat. I'm just speechless. What are these Muppets doing? What are they trying to prove? How is this helpful to consumers? This is like putting a brick on the gas pedal of a car and being like, Hey, look, you can do this, huh? Yeah, it's there. I don't get it. What, like, what have Consumer Reports tested the roadhead safety features of every vehicle? Hey, you know, your girlfriend gives you those side eyes. Is there a camera checking? Hey. Watch out, don't put your fucking hand on his thigh. Don't do that. Don't, no, 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 we know what's going, don't do that. I don't know, like seriously, what What are they doing? If, if people want to do something dumb and illegal in a car, great, that they'll do something dumb and illegal. The key is there that it's dumb and it's illegal. What what value do we get from Consumer Reports doing something dumb and illegal? I just, I, I honestly do not understand. There has to be an ulterior motivation here or just complete incompetence. I just cannot fathom who thought this was a good idea or it was useful. Let's look at the Consumer Reports mission statement. What do they do? What's their point? What's their purpose? Right, here we are on the Consumer Reports website. Little tagline here. Ad free. Influence free. <laughs> right. Powered by consumers. So they seem to be consumer centric. Let's read the about us. Maybe they've got a mission statement. What do we do? Consumer Reports is an independent, non-profit member organization that works side by side with consumers for truth, transparency, and fairness in the marketplace. Fairness. Consumer Reports, um, just for the record, if anyone's watching, I personally believe that this particular issue, the Tesla, the driverless, the rigging the wheel, the getting out, I don't believe that that's fair. Just saying. The adverse consequences, the number of people who will see a headline relating to this report that implies Tesla's vehicles are unsafe in some way because you were able to rig them illegally and do dumb shit. This is going to steer some people away from Teslas for years to come. This may also slow the regulation, the approval of this software to actually be deployed over time. These kind of actions and statements are absolutely, they're abhorrent. I really mean this too. I pick my words very carefully. It's repulsive, it's disgusting, it's despicable, and it's extremely dangerous. There will be people who lose lives as a result of this report. I am sure the amount of influence and sway this will have. There'll be some number of consumers out there. There'll be some slowing down of the progress of autonomous software that's safer than humans, which I'm not saying it is today, but in the future, this can slow that progress down. Never mind the fact that today, Tesla has the three safest vehicles ever tested, the Model S, 3, 
and X, all the three lowest probabilities of injury of any vehicle ever tested, okay? Driving Tesla Day is literally the safest vehicle you can drive, two-day period. There'll be some people now who, again, read a headline, don't really understand what's going on here, and decide not to buy a Tesla because they get the perception that they're unsafe because of this insanity, Consumer Reports. You fucking idiots. Well done. This can have an influence in the minds of regulators as well, even though they should be very data-centric. It's not always the case. This is going to do damage and cause actual harm to actual people. It is really repugnant and repulsive and disgusting and shameful and despicable. Everyone at Consumer Reports who was involved in this should be ashamed with themselves. Now, I understand people might get caught up in the moment and not think too deeply about this. Go, oh, a little bit of fun. Let's see if we can trick the system, okay? This is harmful. This is unfair. This is damaging. And this is absolutely not in the best interest of consumers. I kept my foot near the brake paddle just in case, but there were people standing by and we were in a closed facility. The car continued to follow the lines on the test track. There were no warnings that no one was sitting on the seat, no one was holding the steering wheel, and no one was looking at the road. No one sitting in the driver's seat, and it continued to drive with no warnings to the driver to stay engaged. To be clear, Consumer Reports does not recommend any Tesla owner operate their car in this way. It's reckless, illegal, and potentially life-threatening. These results show it's way too easy to circumvent the autopilot safeguards. No Consumer Reports. Go f*** yourselves. Absolute horse shit. This wasn't way too easy to trick the system. This was extremely elaborate. The guy had to first put the vehicle into autopilot, then set the speed to zero, then put a weight on the steering wheel to trick the system into thinking he or she was still holding the wheel. All right, this is not easy, this is elaborate. Then had to slither out of the driver's seat while keeping the seatbelt buckled, get into the passenger seat, then reach over and actually adjust the speed while making sure that autopilot was activated in a place that had lane markings. This is not easy. This is not way too easy. This is just irresponsible. If people wanna be dumb and do dumb stuff in a car, they will do dumb stuff in a car. Are you suggesting that Tesla should have a system in place if anybody decides to pull out a machine gun and just start shooting people for fun out their window, that Tesla will detect that and somehow stop them shooting out the window? Like, that's not the point of the system here. If people want to go to lengths to do things illegal, knowingly illegal and irresponsible, no one's accidentally going to end up not in the driver's seat while the vehicle's driving itself, okay? We have to put a weight here. We have to rig this up. This is not unsafe. This is not easy. You have to go to great lengths and knowingly break multiple laws here to actually get this to work, okay? I'm not buying this bullshit from Consumer Reports. This is not an honest statement. This is not fair. The system not only failed to make sure the driver was paying attention, it couldn't even tell if there was a driver there at all. You might think that nothing could be done to prevent something like this, but there is. Systems from multiple automakers, such as GM and Ford, are beginning to use eye tracking technology to ensure that the driver is present and actually looking at the road when using their systems. Oh, what do you know? Can you believe it, guys? Oh my goodness me, the completely fair, unbiased, consumer-focused Consumer Reports are happy to inform us that the likes of Ford and GM have superior safety monitoring systems to ensure that you're much safer in their vehicles than in a Tesla. Obviously, that's the too long, didn't read version of this clearly, right? You know, Tesla's very unsafe and dangerous. They don't have a camera watching your every move to determine whether or not you're illegally rigging up weights to their steering wheel and slithering out of your seatbelt into another seat. Oh, please tell us more about these wonderfully safe systems that are much better than Tesla. Please go on Consumer Reports. Oh, this is so, I love it. This feels, this is so fair. Please tell us more. We're calling on Tesla to implement an effective driver monitoring system that will not only help drivers stay engaged, but also prevent abuses of the technology such as this. See, the thing is, Consumer Reports, this is just untrue. Tesla does have a safe driver monitoring system. The very fact that you Muppets had to make a video hacking the system, cheating by rigging a goddamn weight to it and then sliding out of it, surely, I mean, come on, guys, look, seriously, like this, nobody can possibly be serious, okay? I just don't understand. Now, I would understand if Ford and GM came with a big bag of money and said, hey, Consumer Reports, uh, here's some money. Uh, yeah, you guys can figure out what to do from there. Just don't tell anyone who gave you all that money, huh? Now, I'm not saying that actually happened, but that would make me understand why Consumer Reports would do something like this. Again, not making accusations. I'm just trying to think about motivations here because I have to think of a reason other than having consumers' best interests at heart here because it just doesn't make sense, okay? Why would Consumer Reports go to this length and then bring up these other systems? And by the way, I just have a question. 
What happens to the driver monitoring system if the driver's wearing sunglasses and the system can't actually see their eyes? I mean, how easy would it be to fool the system by just wearing sunglasses, something that people would actually do? Now imagine it, take a step further. What if you're wearing sunglasses and you're looking at a phone, but the camera can't see where your eyes are looking? You're distracted, but it doesn't know you're distracted. You're playing games on your phone. What if you start falling asleep and doze off and you don't realize, right? Nothing, you can't tell. Now, I'm just asking the question, which of these two systems, checking for hand pressure on the wheel and beeping and stopping the car automatically if it's not there versus solely monitoring the driver's eyeballs to see where their attention is, which of these systems do you think is the safer driver monitoring system given the fact that people probably do actually wear sunglasses pretty regularly and people do sometimes fall asleep in cars and maybe sometimes people fall asleep with sunglasses on, those kind of things in a car? Which of these systems do you think is, I don't know, the safer? Just let me know in the comments below. Which do you personally think is the safer way? By the way, I'm not saying there's only one way. It has to be this way or the other. But if you have to pick one or the other, which of these systems do you think safer? Speaking of driver monitoring, you guys may or may not be aware, but this is something that Tesla's implementing in the future. So fear not. This is more for the robo taxis. But just for the record, look what Green, the only a hacker, was able to do maybe a month or two ago and look at some of the code behind the scenes in Tesla's full self-driving beta, showing us what Tesla is able to do and is currently working on. Just because, you know, maybe Consumer Reports has enough FUD, this spreads far enough that people just will not even consider buying a Tesla unless it has driver monitoring system as well. Well, let's look at the code. So here we are over on YouTube on Green the Only's channel. He's actually hacked and now showing us the code behind the scenes of what the driver monitoring system is doing and thinking. This is a list of the probabilities of a number of different categories in terms of most probable to least probable. And we'll see these change in real time. So let's press play. I slowed this video down to one quarter percent so we can see these changing a little bit slower. But let's pay attention and watch what happens here. Right now, for example, the system believes there's about a 45% chance that this person is not only wearing glasses, they've used the term sunglasses, but I think this is just general for glasses, and eyes are looking down. And I'd say that's pretty fair. It looks like eyes down to me. So as we play, look, it's almost certain now that the driver's eyes are down. And obviously, as humans, we probably would say the same thing. Notice this. Phone use occasionally will pop in here as a probability. Very low chance, but like a half percent use of phone use could be doing it off the camera as well. So let's keep playing this again, remembering this is quarter speed. Something's happening. Look at this. Oh, look, phone use. 100 to 99% just out of nowhere. As soon as that phone got in their hand, look at the phone use there just pop up. We can see this is basically 100% use. Well, what's he doing now? Putting it on his chest. What the what the hell? Phone use is still around 99%. It seems obvious. The hands on the phone. That looks like phone use to me. Still 99%. Whoa, what happened? Gone. Phone use is down to 1.2%. The system's smart enough to recognize that his hands are no longer on the phone and or it's flipped around a certain way. I don't know exactly how it's coming to this conclusion, but suddenly it's gone from 100% to 0%. Let's see as this progresses. What happens especially to the phone use thing? Phone drops down. Phone use, oh, now look, in the hands, certainly now it's gone back to 100%. I mean, this is the level of monitoring that Tesla's able to do. Again, phone use looks very high, but now it's dropping a little bit, 20%, 100%. And now it's at 99, watch it drop off, it'll do the same thing again. Gone, phone use, almost zero now, because it's smart enough to know a phone sitting up on somebody's chest without hands doesn't make sense, right? So this is a level of monitoring Tesla is actually able to employ in the future in addition to things like checking for pressure on the steering wheel. The point that I'm making here is what consumer reports have done in this video is absolutely abhorrent. It's going to cause far more harm than good. It is absolutely unfair. They didn't even mention this. I mean, hello, this is not new information. Look at this video, 7th of April, okay? Long time ago, it was all available there. They didn't even mention the fact that this is in the works. Just completely biased in my opinion, unfair, and I really do have to question the motivations of consumer reports. As you guys have already realized by now, I am absolutely appalled at the behavior and the motivations of consumer reports here. I understand if perhaps people meant well. Maybe so, maybe not. I'm not sure if they're incompetent, malicious, or some combination thereof. But I can say in no uncertain terms, this has done major and significant damage and will cause injuries and deaths and permanent disabilities as a result of some people hearing, reading some headlines, not really digging into the details, and falling under the false assumption that Tesla vehicles are in some way unsafe and or that autonomous and or driver assist systems are also dangerous and unsafe. This is truly appalling and I hope the people at Consumer Reports have time to reflect on this, realize their mistake, come forward and apologize for what they've done. Not sure how likely that is, but I'm gonna say it one more time. Until then, until I hear, well, you know what, we made a mistake, sorry we got carried away, we were just having fun, we didn't realize we do some damage, but we accept now that we have. Until I hear that, 
My final message to Consumer Reports before I wrap this video up is the same message at the very beginning. Go f*** yourselves. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan, this is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget, if you'd like up to $250 in free crypto bonuses with BlockFi, use the link in the description. You can also get two free stocks with Weeble and a free stock with Stake also linked in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe. And don't don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching, so thanks again.